What is your name and what do you do? Okay, my name is Kim Coford and I'm the Learning Coordinator of Design and Visual Arts at Bradfield Senior College. What is the subject of visual arts and why is it important to you? It's an exploration of the history and of the critical and analysis of visual arts, but also for students to explore their own um, creative uh, inspiration and technique and skill, but also for them to develop skills in developing an idea and how you can convey that idea using visual language. As an ex-visual arts student, I felt the way Nessa created the syllabus provided a bottleneck to both teachers and students. The teachers were encouraged to teach students very specific things rather than allowing the, for the independence that arts should encourage. Let's look at the theory in the syllabus first, the conceptual framework and the four-frame diagram. How would you say understanding the conceptual framework and the, the four frames of art benefits uh, a student in their own art making? Or one might say it could create a sense of objectivity to their own uh, artwork and takes out the personal, uh, personal and emotional factor of it. Um, I think the, the frames and the conceptual framework, they're a structure. They're a structure of being able to look at and analyse and um, form form a, a, a position um, on an artwork and an artist, an artist's body of work or an artist's world and their influences. What Ms Crawford said does provide merit to the use of this theory in art criticism. I think, however, that teachers should still allow for other theories to be taught and used in their classrooms. However, Ms Crawford does take a very different approach to her lessons than most teachers. I feel that she does this so in spite of the syllabus. When it comes to the delivery, the way in which you can deliver history and criticism um, doesn't have to be just in those traditional models of delivery. It's so it can be integrated. So quite often I'd like to be able to look at history and criticism through practical methods as well. And would you say that this, uh, that this philosophy that you have uh, translates to other schools that teach visual arts um, in your experience? Well. I'd say that there's a lot of different approaches to the teaching of the visual arts syllabus. Some will very much isolate and silo the art history criticism and have it very separate to um, students' investigations of artists uh, of their own, for their own body of work. Um, and others see the benefit of integration and crossover. So it's potentially detrimental uh, if you separate the two in your opinion? I think it makes it hard for students to see the relativity and the relationship to their own making and processes if they are not looking at artists that might um, seem relative to their work but it, also, it, it's fine to look at artists who aren't completely relative to your own art making. The use of the four frame diagram and the conceptual framework can also potentially be a hindrance when you're making your own art. I feel that art should be first and foremost made from your own personal views and personal beliefs or feelings, rather than what will the markers like. Can you describe your body of work to me? My body of work is uh, Stolen Youth, and it's a collection of works uh, based around kids who have had their childhood taken away from them by other people. So not all children grow up with the same sort of childhood. So I want to express that children should be heard uh, when they are trying to explain something that's happening in their lives. Do you feel that an attitude of what would the markers like had any influence on your work? Not at all. If I wanted to do something that the markers would like and that would get into Art Express, I would have done something about colourful butterflies and how great life is and something like that because that's what, in the end, that's what gets into Art Express. I've never seen something truly confronting being put into Art Express. When I went to Art Express, uh, I saw a lot of works to do with recycling, the environment, um, patri like patriarchal society. Um, I never saw anything about true self-harm, uh, anything that had real photos of crime scenes that children well, had committed. Not, you're not really allowed to do that, are you? 
In Art Express, that is not allowed because my artworks will get censored, yes. But I did put that in my major work. I think that's fantastic. Yes. But do you think a student could feel limited by um, yeah. the question of what were the markers like? Yeah, because I felt completely limited. And it was between do I want to do something I'm passionate about and that I want to express or something that is not that important to me. And I won't be able to express completely because I don't know my true feelings about it. Estelle was one of the best students in Ms. Kofold's class. She and I agree that the body of work can be very limiting if you wish to appease the markers. The irony I find in this, however, is that we tend to celebrate artists who went against the critics of the time. As a writer, whenever I get a thought, it's extremely important to jolt it down. And which is why I do all three palm cards just up here. At the top I have themes, and as I go down I have potential scripts, and then in the middle it's... Why do I need a visual arts diary on top of that? How do you think the visual art diary assists students in their art making? It is there as evidence of the production of the work by the student. The benefit of it in reality is that it allows a student to consider their planning, their process, reflect on their ideas, and a lot of artists in the real world use sketchbooks and, and visual process diaries. So it's reflecting how artists in the real world work as well. And so I think that's important. Well, I find that last point very interesting because for me personally, and I do know quite a few other students who use other methods, when I told my teacher about this, uh, they said, well, you're going to have to put it all in your visual, uh, visual arts process diary. Mm. And... If your process is to put it all up on the wall, I would have suggested to maybe take a photo of it and that be, be a submission of your visual arts process. Uh, the suggestion, uh, what happened was that I had to then rely on uh, that in the classroom rather than being able to keep it at home and being able to remember. So I had to mm. prove that I was using my visual arts process diary, which mm. was personally frustrating. What Miss Crawford said made me more inclined to agree with her about visual art stories, as it is important for art students to be able to jot down their thoughts. However, I think that work should still be done to expand what is considered to be an art diary. A lot of what Estelle and Miss Crawford said changed my mind about several things, and I can now certainly see that theory has its use. But the theory done at a lot of schools is chosen for you, including my old school. Studying Renaissance and Christian art won't have any assistance in techniques of filmmaking, just perhaps theming. And I agree with Miss Crawford when she says that students can't see the mer merit of theory unless it relates back to art making. I take it a step further to make sure that all theory is chosen by individual students. Have more freedom to what constitutes as a diary. Arrange your 12 uh, visual arts classes to be more like an art college. A one-on-one -on -one meeting with the teacher each week to discuss progress, art making and theory so students can spend more time outside of the classroom if need be. Perhaps there is something to be said about my own shortcomings and how I find it very hard to focus on things that fall outside my specific fields of interests. But if any subject was to embrace people's differences, it should be visual arts.